Good evening and welcome to the seventh night of our preaching on online uh, virtual revival. We thank God for all of those who have come alongside of us uh, now and those who are on their way. We're looking forward to having another great time uh, in the Word of God. And certainly we want to uh, just thank God for all of His benefits shown towards us and for this great day that He has made and allowed us to prepare and, re and rejoice in it. Uh, and so as we come tonight, uh, as we uh, come to hear the Word of God tonight, we're going to be asking God's Spirit to just move in a very powerful and mighty way that all of those who are online or might call or text or, or tell somebody about uh, the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we welcome you again uh, to this, our seventh night of preaching as a part of our eight-night online virtual revival celebration. We want to begin tonight, as we've already always have done during this revival, our theme text and scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Uh, and after that, we'll uh, give you instructions as how we will proceed uh, tonight. But again, for all of those who have joined us, welcome. Uh, put your uh, hallelujah uh, and shouting shoes on that we might celebrate the Lord, uh, the God of our salvation, the God of history and hope. Uh, for our reading then from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, and I'm reading from the King James translation. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Uh, and so we want to hear uh, what the Spirit has to say to the church tonight uh, through the power of the God and, God and the power of His Word. The way we proceed tonight is that uh, Reverend uh, uh, Michael Manning will come and he will read for us our scripture for the uh, sermon tonight. And after that, our praise team will give us a selection and will be followed by the speaker of the hour for this evening's revival preaching moment. Uh, the Reverend Christopher Davis, who will come and share with us uh, out of his gifts as God has uh, anointed him and has gifted him uh, to speak into our hearts and uh, to give us a word uh, from on high. And so I say to you tonight, let's hear what the Spirit has to say to the church, that we all might be blessed thereby. And so at this moment, we're going to invite uh, Reverend Michael Madden to read our scripture, followed by the song, and then the next voice you will hear will be that of the Speaker of the Hour, uh, Reverend Christopher Davis. Good evening, Zion Hill. It's revival time. Our scripture is coming tonight from Joel in the Old Testament, chapter 2, verses 25, verse 26. And it declares, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palm of worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. This is the reading of God's word from Joel chapter 2 verses 25 and verse 26. As we always declare, if there's prayer in the pew, there'll be power in the pulpit. But if there's fire in the pew, there'll be fire in the pulpit. God bless you. Amen.
honor to God, to our pastor, our first lady, and to all of you, it's a privilege to be able to come before you and to deliver the word that God has given me for you this evening. So I know that our scripture has already been read for our hearing, but I would like to take a look again at Joel 2 and 26. And it reads, And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And I want to talk briefly to you from the idea that God has dealt wondrously with me. Let us pray. God, we thank you for another opportunity at life, Lord, and another opportunity that you've given us to give your name praise. We ask, Lord, that in this preaching moment that you, that you come in, that you open up our hearts, open up our minds, that we can receive the word that you would have for each one of us individually and collectively. Lord, we ask that you take me out of the equation and let your Holy Ghost do the preaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God has dealt wondrously with me. The word wondrously comes from the word wondrous. Wondrous is defined as something that is extraordinary. That's something that is awesome or wonderful. And if I were to ask many of you this year how your year has been going, the word wondrous most likely wouldn't come to mind. During the past six or seven months, we all have been at the risk of being a victim of something. We were and were still at risk of contracting COVID-19. You can find yourself at the wrong place at the wrong time, but with the right intentions and be at risk of becoming a victim of the excessive act of violence within our city and in cities across the country. Some of us have been at risk of becoming a victim of police brutality based on the color of our skin or whatever description that they say that we fit. When looking at all of these things which affects all of us in some way, it can cause us to pause and ask God, God, how are you dealing with us? With such a disproportionate number of people in black and brown communities affected and often succumbing to complications due to COVID-19, we may stop and ask God, God, how are you dealing with us? With cases such as George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Daniel Prude, just to name a few, it's evident that others don't know how to deal with us. Some may be watching tonight and on top of everything that's going on around them. They're going through personal struggles of their own. They're going through battles in their mind, sickness in their body, and they find themselves asking the question, God, how are you dealing with me? Do you still have a plan for me? Is there still purpose for my life? But I want to assure you tonight that even at your lowest point, even in the middle of all of the tragedy and loss that has been surrounding you, that God is still God. He hasn't forgotten about you. He's still dealing with you and he has some wonderful things that are in store for you. And when you have a history with God, even when storms come, when loneliness comes, when depression comes, when pandemic happens, when racism and injustice surrounds you, you can look back on all the wonderful things that God has done for you in the past, and it gives you assurance that he will continue to deal with you wondrously now and into the future. We know very little about Joel, who was the writer of our text for this evening. We know that he was a prophet in the kingdom of Judah. Joel begins his prophecy by giving vivid details to the people of Judah about God's judgment during the day of the Lord. In the three short chapters of this book, Joel mentions the phrase, the day of the Lord, five times. The day of the Lord would not just consist of 24 hours, but it was a period of disaster, destruction, and judgment. As readers of the text, we have to know that this was not a prophecy of things to come. In the future of Judah, the people of Judah were already beginning to experience one disaster after the next. Joel tells the people that the locusts that had arrived were going to swoop over the land and destroy everything in sight. Locusts are insects that are similar to grasshoppers. They can swarm and gather into groups of millions. The locusts would first chew, then multiply, then crawl, and finally they will consume all of the vegetation in that region. It was a time of famine and financial ruin. 
there was a devastating drought and wildfires that destroyed the land. And Joel doesn't mention in his book about the sins of the people that could have caused the Lord to bring such torment upon the people of Judah. But if we go back to the book of Ezekiel, the people of Judah were guilty of rejecting the law of the Lord. They became immoral. They worshipped other gods. And all of this was encouraged by corrupt leadership that was in charge of the region. Many scholars date the book of Job back to 835 BC. At that time, Judah had a pattern of wicked and ungodly leadership. Its leaders committed murder to secure their ability to rule. They didn't respect anything that was holy or sacred. And now Judah is facing all of this wrath toward the end of the reign of one of its wicked leaders. As we compare Joel's prophecy to what we are experiencing in the United States today, we can find some similarities. We might not have had locusts, but we have a virus that has spread across the country and claimed lives of so many Americans. The existence of this virus has affected so many aspects of our country. Many people have found themselves out of work and are facing a financial crisis. There's a famine that has swept across this country as food prices are rising and people are trying to find ways to feed their family. But we've also had wildfires in certain regions that have claimed lives and homes and lands. And just like the story surrounding our text this evening, we've also had this happen toward the end of the term of an ungodly leader. Church, we have to be so careful of who we allow to lead us. There is a huge price to pay when power is in the hands of the wrong person. We suffer when power is in the hands of the wrong person. I strongly believe that our country is facing a lot of the trouble that we see today because we have allowed the wrong person to lead while they continuously disrespect women, make a mockery of the church and the word of God, support the mistreatment of those in the black and brown community, and pull resources away from those who are economically impoverished. And while all of this is happening, those who are in a position to directly make a change sit and turn a blind eye to what is going on. Even though they have some power, we know that they don't have all power. The wrong leader can operate only but for so long. Man may have his day, but the Lord will have his day. And the Lord will always show us who is really in control. As we come to the second chapter of Joel where our text is found, Joel continues to prophesy of more devastation during the day of the Lord. He tells them that there will be an, an invading army of locusts, more fires, and darkness over the land. But Joel also tells them that there is a way of escape. God is still merciful toward them, and he can turn all of their devastation around and do some wonderful things in their lives. And I have to pause right here and thank God for his mercy. As his mercy was with Judah, his mercy is still with us today. I am a product of the mercy of God. You are a product of the mercy of God. He has turned things around for us even when we didn't deserve it. And someone out there has the testimony that things could have gone a whole different way. But because of the mercy of God, you are still here. Lamentations 3 and 22 says it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Joel tells the people of Judah that God will deal with them compassionately if they choose to repent and turn wholeheartedly back to the Lord. Repentance is when we come to God acknowledging our sins and ask him to forgive us. We then turn our lives completely over to him. And just like the people of Judah had a choice, we also have a choice. Now is the time for us to repent and to turn back to the Lord. As a country, we have strayed so far away from God. Our communities are overflowing with people, yet many churches are heading toward closing for good because of the lack of attendance. There has been a decline in the morals of our society. Many things in our daily life have become more important than spending time with God in prayer, and reading of the word each day. We must take advantage of this choice while we still have time. We can choose to turn away from God during the time of famine, destruction, financial crisis, 
racism, and violence. Or we can choose to have a stronger relationship with God, despite what's going on around us. As we look at Joel 2 and 25, we see that God has promised to do some wonderful things but show for those who choose to get right with him. It's important to point out in this verse that it is God himself speaking. And when God speaks, we can be absolutely sure that his words are true and that his promises will never fail us. In this verse, God is promising to restore everything that they had lost during the year of devastation to those who choose to have a relationship with him. During the time of the Lord's judgment, their harvests were completely wiped out. Their wheat and barley crops were ruined. Their grapevines had disappeared. The locusts had destroyed everything. But now God is promising his people that they will see their crops return. He will make up for all of the years of loss that they had experienced. He will compensate them for everything that they went through. And there's nothing like divine compensation. Someone needs to know that your day of compensation will come. God is able to restore the things in your life that you have lost. And I'm a witness that when God deals with you, and when he restores you, you won't look anything like what you've been through. What you gain will be far greater than what you've lost. Imagine how the people of Judah felt as they watched the locusts destroy all of their land and, and their harvest. Harvesting is hard work. I can imagine the feeling as if all of the hard work and the time that they had put in in order to reap a successful harvest was now all a waste. Someone may be watching tonight and you feel that you have wasted years of your life and everything that you worked for has ended up being a waste. You may feel as if you put in so much time and energy into people and into opportunities and now you have nothing to show for it. You wasted years working on relationships that have failed. You wasted years because of poor choices that you may have made. You wasted years because you were focused on all of the wrong things. And we know that time is something that we can never get back. But here in verse 25, God promises to do what we think is impossible. God is willing and able to restore those years and turn those trials and disappointments into triumphs for those who choose to honor him. God wants us to honor him and he wants us to have a relationship with him, not just on the basis of gaining material things. He wants a relationship with us so that he can deal with us from the inside. And you may have not experienced physical locusts in your life, but you may have experienced some heartaches, some disappointments, and some traumas that are eating you up and destroying you on the inside. These experiences may have eaten up your joy. They could have eaten away at your peace of mind. They may have eaten away at your trust. But I want you to know tonight that God wants to restore you. God wants to have a relationship with you so that he can deal with your insecurities. He can deal with your heartaches. He can deal with the things you're too ashamed to even tell anyone. He will deal patiently with you. And he will restore you in all of the troublesome places in your life. In Psalm 51 and 12, David asked God to restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. That should be our desire tonight, that God restores us in the areas of our lives where we have been broken and to replace those things with joy. As we come to Joel 2 and 26, God is promising the people of Judah to return that return to him that they will eat. He tells them that their fields will produce food again. Their days of famine are now over. Not only will they have enough food to sustain themselves, but they will now have more than enough. God is going to make sure that they are satisfied. Someone may be watching tonight and, and you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Someone may be trying to pull all of their resources together to figure out what and if they can eat. But when you give God your life and you trust him with every problem that comes your way, I guarantee you that he will deal with each one of them and he will make sure that you will eat. Not only will you eat, but you will have more than enough. You can set your table in faith, knowing that God will make a way for you to eat. Children of God, as we're living in these turbulent times in our country, be confident in the God that we serve and know that we will eat. Psalm 37 and 25 says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God won't leave you hungry. 
In verse 26, God also tells the people of Judah that they will have a praise. After they see how wondrously God has dealt with them, there will be no question about who it was that turned their situation around. There will be no question about who restored their land. There will be no question about who put food on their table. There will be no question about who provided water to them after their rivers had been dried up. They will know who stopped the fires from spreading across their lands. It was nobody but God. There were plenty of us that have a nobody but God praise. We know that we couldn't overcome the obstacles that we faced if it wasn't for God. So many of us can identify with the songwriter that wrote, If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? That's why I get joy when I think about what he's done for me and how wondrously he's dealt with me. When you know that it has been nobody but God that has been keeping you, providing for you, strengthening you, blessing you, feeding you, protecting you, then you won't mind giving God praise. At the end of verse 26, God says, And my people shall never be ashamed. Imagine having to go through hard times and everybody knows about it. Everyone around you can see it. You can't hide any of the trouble that you're going through. And when you have a sense of pride, this can easily make you feel ashamed. That's how the people of Judah felt while they were going through these times of famine and financial loss. But God promises to deal with them and to restore their faith. They won't be ashamed anymore because God will make sure that they will be taken care of and they would never experience lack again. They won't feel defeated anymore because God has already taken care of their needs from that point on and into the future. Someone needs to know tonight that you can hold your head up again because God has already taken care of your needs. You don't have to feel ashamed. You don't have to feel defeated. God is dealing with you and he will deal with you wondrously. Not only will he deal with you in private, but he has a way of dealing with you in front of the same people who tried to shame you. He'll deal with you in front of the same people who talked about you. He'll deal with you in front of the same people that tried to keep you bound. When you are a child of God, he'll restore you and raise you up from your lowest point and turn your life absolutely around. They will have no choice but to see the amazing things that God has done in your life. As I close, I want to encourage you and let you know that God is still a restorer. His hand is still working in the lives of his people. And God is not finished with us yet. I know life has, as we know it, has changed drastically within the last seven months. But I need some of you to believe God with me and say that it won't be this way always. God is willing and able to turn everything around. And I believe that there will be glory after this. And when this is all over, we all will be able to say for ourselves that God has dealt wondrously with me. I know that we've been separated over the past seven months, and so much has happened in each of our lives. But if I could talk post personally with most of you, I know that there will be testimonies of how God has worked things out for your good, even during the pandemic. I know there will be testimonies of how God has fed us during a time of famine. There will be testimonies of how God has healed bodies during times of sickness. And there are testimonies how, of how God has made a way during a time of financial ruin. And we owe him all the praise. It's been nobody but God. And when you give your life to God, there is no part of you that he will turn away. He'll take your burdens, your hardships, your confusions, and he'll turn them around and do something wonderful in your life. Let the church say amen, and let us say amen again. Let's give God praise and glory, uh, for God uh, has dealt wonderfully with us. He's dealt wonderfully with me, and I know he's dealt wonderfully with you. And the God we serve is a God who wants to restore, uh, he wants to give us joy, uh, and he wants us to be uh, all that we can be in him. But what we have to do if we're going to have those benefits from God is that we have to be a part of who he is and allow him to be in our lives. Uh, and so tonight here, uh, after you've heard this powerful word, as the Spirit has spoken unto the church through this mighty servant of his, we come now to uh, offer an invitation to you that you might come to make uh, the Lord Jesus Christ Lord of your life. And so if you're out there tonight and have not made a decision to come over on the Lord's side, I want to take this moment, take this opportunity to extend to each of you uh, an invitation uh, to come and be a part uh, of the family of God and become a citizen in the kingdom of God. 
in our tradition, we have ways in which you can come and be a part of the fellowship. You can come and be a part of the church. Uh, you can come and uh, enlist as a citizen in uh, the kingdom building work that God uh, has for us. We can do that by uh, coming uh, uh, under repentance and asking to be baptized as a candidate for baptism. So if you've not been baptized and you want to become a part of the church of Jesus Christ, you believe in your heart and you confess it with your uh, mouth and spirit that God has done a marvelous thing in you uh, and that you're, willing to now, you're ready now to become connected to the church of Jesus Christ. And we want to invite you to come. If you want to come as a candidate for baptism tonight, we want you to put your name in the chat or, and give us an email address and we will follow up with you or you can contact the church's office that we might have an opportunity to schedule with you a Time that you continue uh, your process of becoming a full-fledged member in the Church of Jesus Christ uh, and be witnessed as a, pu pu a public uh, statement uh, as one who has made Jesus your choice. So you can come as a candidate for baptism. Secondly, you could come uh, under restoration. If you have been a part of this church uh, and you're out of fellowship with the church, you've not uh, been engaged in uh, its ministry, you've not been engaged in its worship or in its communion celebration, uh, and you want to be reconnected to us, you want to come alongside of us again and afresh yourself, uh, and that God restore you as he's able to do, and that he might bring you a new sense of joy and purpose in your life. If you want to be reconnected back to our church, you can come uh, under restoration. Uh, and uh, you can actually do that by putting your name in the chat, give us an email, or you can contact the church's office, uh, call us, uh, and let us know that you want to be reconnected to our church family. And we thank those who have already made that decision over the course of these uh, days that we've had preaching and teaching going on over the last uh, oh, two weeks. And so we want to also uh, extend an invitation to someone who uh, uh, is can come under Christian experience. That is, that you've been a member of another church, you've been baptized, but you have not been operating in your faith, and now you believe that in this season that we're in, it's time to get reconnected back to God, and you see us as a fellowship uh, that uh, shares in your commitment to doing things that will move uh, the work of the kingdom of God in the earth uh, forward, and you want to be a part of that. We invite you to come uh, and join us uh, under Christian experience. And lastly, you can come as a uh, transfer member. If you have a letter from your church uh, stating that you're in good standing with your fellowship, but because of circumstance or because of uh, uh, geography, you want to come and be a part of our fellowship, uh, and you see that this is a place where you can uh, carry out the, the principles of, of God's Word uh, and the covenant that you've made unto Him uh, in Jesus Christ. If you want to join us tonight, we extend an invitation to for you to come uh, through uh, a letter of transfer. And so those are the ways that we can come to be a part of the church of Jesus Christ. And so we want to encourage you, if you're out there and you're outside of the ark of safety, now is the time, uh, tonight is a good night. Thursday night is a good night uh, to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and make him fresh and new in your life. And so we extend that invitation to you. And we would uh, be remiss if we didn't give you an opportunity to uh, engage uh, in our prayer of repentance uh, and so that you can be affirmed and reassured uh, in, as you begin your faith walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I invite you, uh, if you're outside of the ark of safety, if you have not made Jesus your choice, uh, to come alongside of us and pray this prayer. Let it become your prayer as you continue uh, to move uh, in the direction that God might transform your life. Uh, let us pray together. Lord, I come today believing in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died and that he rose again, that I might have this opportunity for eternal life. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. In Jesus' name, I pray. I believe that if you prayed that prayer with uh, sincerity uh, and with a contrite heart, uh, then God has heard your prayer, uh, and then you're ready now to become a part uh, and uh, be actively involved in the church of Jesus Christ, that you might work out your faith uh, and exercise your faith in him, uh, that the world might know whose side you're on. And so, again, we would welcome all of those who would make the, de the decision or the choice uh, to make Jesus uh, Lord of their lives. Again, tonight I want to thank our speaker for a powerful message, uh, Reverend Davis, for letting us know that God has dealt wonderfully uh, with him, but he's also dealt wonderfully with us, and that he wants to restore us. And we thank him for that powerful, powerful word. 
Before we close tonight, I want to encourage you to uh, continue to be with us through tomorrow night, which is the last night of our uh, two-week, eight-night uh, of preaching uh, with uh, two uh, nights of teaching. We want to uh, encourage you to come, out, uh, come back and come alongside of us on tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night, Reverend Dr. J. Esther Rowe will close out uh, this virtual revival that we have uh, instituted here uh, for the first time. It was the first time we've done this, but we thank God for uh, all of those who've joined us. We see the numbers, and we're just excited about who all is hearing uh, the Word of God and how the Spirit is speaking unto the church. And so we thank you for your participation. We'd ask that if you've been following us and you have not uh, uh, clicked on the subscribe button, if you click on the subscribe button, then you'll be a have access immediately to all of the uh, uh, ministry efforts that we put up online on this YouTube channel. Uh, services, uh, our Bible study uh, and revival and other uh, acts of worship that we might put up on uh, this medium, you can have direct access to it. And so finally, I want to, as I made an appeal earlier in the week, appeal uh, for those who would uh, have been blessed by what they've heard so far, have been blessed by the preaching, uh, the singing, uh, and this opportunity to have a chance to hear the Word of God, uh, that uh, on tomorrow night, if you would uh, give uh, uh, your support, some sort of financial support. We're not saying how much, whatever you're led to give uh, in this effort. We've not been taking offering through this uh, time uh, because that's not the reason we're here. We're here to get the Word of God out. But if you want to financially support uh, this effort so that we can continue to do uh, these kinds of services and continue to use this medium to uh, spread the gospel throughout uh, our community, our church family, and across this state and across uh, other states who are have people who are watching us and listening to what we have been doing here over the course of these uh, days. And so we thank you in advance of what you're going to do. We ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to touch you uh, in a way that you might support this effort. Uh, again, no amount is too small, no amount is too big. Whatever you feel and led uh, to give, we would certainly appreciate that uh, in uh, tomorrow night or in the days following that. With that said, uh, we are going to come to a close I want to also just take a moment to thank uh, those who are on the technical team that allow us to do this uh, and have allowed us to do this down through uh, these last uh, uh, two weeks, these eight days, uh, well, the seven of eight days. We thank them. We thank the praise team for all that they've been doing for our worship service and keeping us going uh, with the life and the joy of worship through their music. And so with that said, we are ready to close. I want to end with a prayer. Uh, again, thank all of you for joining us. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you again for another chance to uh, have this opportunity to use the power of this medium, the Internet, uh, that men and women might hear a word from heaven. And maybe somebody who was online tonight just needed to hear again that you are God who restores, you are God who will bring back joy, uh, you are God who will build up uh, and not tear down. And so, oh God, we thank you for this worship experience. We thank you for this word. And we pray, oh God, that in the days ahead, you will strengthen us in our journey, that you will strengthen us in our faith, you will renew our joy, uh, and will continue to lift us, that we might be able uh, to carry out uh, the assignment that you've assigned for our hands to do in kingdom building work that you've given to us here uh, in the earth. Lord, we thank you for Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church, and we thank you for all of its efforts, and we pray that you continue to bless us uh, in this night and on tomorrow and in the days ahead. Bless the speaker for tomorrow, God, we pray, and continue to bless all that we seek to do to your glory and to your honor. Lord, we love you tonight. We honor you, and we magnify your name. Uh, now, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now henceforth and forevermore. And wherever you are, we're going to ask you to say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, uh, and God keep you, and heaven smile on you. And have a great night.